it's already Wednesday, the good old hump day. For those of you that work five days a week, I work seven days a week, so just another day. It is the 24th day, ladies and gentlemen, of July 2013. And Obama, again, is doing his 20-something economy pivot, reset, whatever he calls it, as the globalist publicly state their plan is to deindustrialize uh, the Western world from Australia to Western Europe right through to the United States and Canada. But also halt industrialization and clean industrialization or, or more modern industrialization of the entire third world except in small controlled development zones under IMF World Bank agreements. That's the new world order. They're above the law, they don't pay taxes, poor people, middle class people, rich people that aren't part of the inside crew, countries, everybody else gets gang raped. And it is the most inequitable, discriminatory system, but we're all busy fighting with each other over George Zimmerman, aren't we? Meanwhile, there's an article up on Infowars.com, the black George Zimmerman the media doesn't want you to know about, a black neighborhood watch gentleman that found three white teens breaking into vehicles. They rushed him. He shot and killed one. And the prosecutor wanted to throw him in jail. But guess what happened? The grand jury said, no. Witnesses said they saw the guys run at you, not jump on top of you and slam your head into the ground. Run at you so you had a right to shoot them. And this is what thugs in government and thugs on the street, they're all the same. They want to have the guns. The government wants to have the guns at the highest levels. And the low-level police on average are pro-guns, so they understand that. But the high-level criminals, they don't want you armed. The street thugs don't want you armed. I don't care if you're a black thug in the whole gangster urban culture or a white thug in the whole gangster urban culture. You want to feed on people that don't have a gun strapped to them and aren't ready to peel off a cap in your booty. That's what we're talking about here. And it, it's such a good feeling, folks, when I sleep at night or when I'm in my studio that I'm not afraid of some crazy coming in here after me because I'm going to peel a cap off in their butt so fast. Anyways, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting uh, a little bit urban myself, as they say. The point is so much fun. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that criminals at every level want the monopoly of force, whether it's the UN, whether it's the globalist, whether it is uh, the mafia, you name it. The first thing a robber does when they bust into somebody's house is they say, hands up, get down on the floor, and they tie you up. And government's tying us down with the ropes of Homeland Security to carry out the orderly extermination of our liberties and our conversion into a totally massive police state. So I'm going to open the phones up again. I'm, I'm by increment moving towards what I could do 10 years ago every day, take 50 calls in an hour. I'm incrementally moving towards that Valhallic uh, area of the universe. Uh, and then we're going to have an update on some major medical developments for 30 minutes at the end of the second hour. Looking at amazing news on fish oil that they're demonizing. Uh, also, major scientific studies on iodine in food, boosting IQ. This is really important stuff. And we're also going to uh, have a gentleman on who's got an offer for George Zimmerman. But we'll break that when they join us in the last 15 minutes or so uh, of the third hour. But it's going to be open phones. We've got big military police state news, big NSA news, big Trayvon Martin uh commie protest breaking uh, big uh, Obamacare uh, news and the showdown on that. It's all coming up today, so strap yourselves in. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are here broadcasting worldwide. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to be taking your phone calls throughout the next three hours on this Wednesday uh, edition. We're going to plunge into Obama's 20-something, it's the 25th uh, pivot or reset of the economy, which means more banker bailouts to foreign corporations, more taxpayer payments to MSNBC, uh, more domestic CIA propaganda operations, more people getting uh, text from Obama uh, forced onto the front page of their phone, uh, more uh, checkpoints on the highways, more illegal desensitization, military drills on the streets, uh, TSA checkpoints, more forced inoculation outside of law, more harassment of businesses, shutting down industries, shutting down power plants, shutting down factories, paying $21 billion to ship General Motors to communist China, on and on. More persecution of the press, more persecution of whistleblowers, of money laundering, government drug dealing, illegal spying, illegal torture, just, just, just absolute orgy of corruption yeah the weekly standard says it's his 19th time to pivot but i count over 20 because uh it's, it's 19 pivots but five or six resets in fact look up how many times he's called it a reset i remember it every six months or so so i'm conservative when i say four or five times he's been in office five years five and a half i don't know i don't know i mean 15 resets so I, when I say 25, I mean, I'm counting pivots, resets. I mean, they call wars now non-lethal, lethal operations, or lethal, non-lethal, or less lethal, or kinetic actions. It's just a wall of bull. And now Congress is looking at a government shutdown over Obamacare as Republican leadership in the Senate forced by their constituents. Some of these guys just a year ago were still supporting Obamacare are now seeing it will sink the country. It will bankrupt health care, which is the Cloward and Piven socialist Obama plan to bankrupt the country. They're talking about six out of 10 doctors in a national survey Monday. We covered uh, quitting. And by the way, my dad's a dentist and oral surgeon. He knows a lot of dentists, a lot of oral surgeons, a lot of doctors. Most of them that are even 50 years old already. Only plastic surgeons and specialists are making three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year. I know Harvard educated doctors in my family who have been doctors and graduates for sixteen years and just finished paying off their student loans and moved from a lower middle class house into a you know a middle middle class type house, you know, four bedroom, so that all their kids have a place to sleep. And, and, and I mean, I mean, so some people have this image of doctors are just rolling in money. 17 years to pay off your student loans from Harvard. 17 years. This is the type of stuff that is going on out there. And now because of the regulations and the liability insurance, the malpractice insurance, I know doctors that have to pay who've never even had major claims or never lost there's, there's all sorts of kooks out there trying to get rich off these fake claims who have to pay 70 to 80 or even more thousand dollars a year for their liability insurance, their malpractice insurance. And I know doctors that have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of serious surgeries, or really more than that, who've actually had cases, but, but beat the malpractice cases. And they've got to pay $150,000 a year. Uh, in liability insurance. It is the insurance companies that are destroying this country along with a pack of lawyers, the litigious, uh, baritary practicing frauds uh, who the courts will not bring to justice. You know, most cases, somebody brings a false charge, you've got to go fight it and beat it. It's The law says you can sue them back for attorney's fees and things, but it's very hard to win unless you know exactly which court to go after them in. And again, this is knowledge that, both, that most lawyers don't know and most lawyers don't want to tell you because even if they're, quote, a good guy lawyer, they, they're actually, at, at, at a certain level, working with the corrupt lawyers in that they're not shutting them down when they could. They're letting them go out and create fraudulent cases and then basically 
going and beating them, but still both sides make money. And I'm kind of digressing. Then you have the big multinational uh, pharma companies that have tax exemption. In many cases, uh, they have diplomatic immunity, and they have immunity domestically in most countries, in Europe, the United States, you name it, from their drugs hurting people. They have liability protection and immunity given to them, sovereign immunity as it's called, by the government. Well, that's unconstitutional for Bayer Pharmaceutical to knowingly put HIV in their factor eight and knowingly ship it out for 10 years, a death sentence with hepatitis as well, and then, oh, well, they've got, they've got immunity because the government passed a law. What happened this year? Monsanto was given immunity from their GMOs. Now, 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 why would Congress pass the Monsanto Protection Act, written by Monsanto, to give them immunity? Just like they were given immunity on Agent Orange and dioxin they dumped in poor black neighborhoods, on and on and on. These are consciously evil companies with evil histories and clear and present danger to humanity. So the bad guys are protected from liability. And then your small town hospital isn't, so it goes bankrupt from all the lawsuits because there's all these bugs that are immune to the drugs, that are immune to the uh, different type of antibiotics. And so you come in there and the guy next to you has it and there's nothing they can do in the hospital to stop it from getting over to you. You die of flesh-eating bacteria and then you go and sue and beat the hospital. And then now it's shut down and you've got to go to one of the big tax-free Rockefeller-owned uh, tax exempt, but they're really profit centers. And guess what? They've got all the judges in their pockets. You can't win against them. See, the whole New World Order is about made men. And I'm not talking about the Gambinos and the uh, Bananos and the uh, you know groups like that. I'm not talking about Don Corleone. That's a low-level mafia that the globalists just kind of fed on and partially destroyed because it got too big for its britches, as I've told you many times and as a historical fact. The real mafias are so entrenched, they run our government, they run our military, they own the big banks, they own the insurance companies, they're 100% globally tax exempt, they can commit any crime they want and get away with it, they can take private bank accounts from Cyprus or the United States and get away with it, they can commit any amount of, you know, they kill people at their own house. There's been cases with the DuPonts and people, uh, you know, driving around with army tanks, their own private army tanks, running people over and they get away with it for years. I mean, this this is who they are. And they're establishing a world government where they're 100% above the law in every level and every regulation. And why is that important? Because they write the regulations to shut you down and impoverish you and enslave you and use poverty as a political weapon. It's called siege. It's called salting the earth politically, economically. And I sit here watching a Godzilla-level attack by the globalist. Godzilla couldn't, 50 Godzillas couldn't do to America what the globalists have already done the last 30 years. I mean, they're shutting everything down with regulations and bureaucrats and harassment right here in Austin that's under Agenda 21, the major command base. They have Agenda 21 meetings I've sent my crews to. They show this triangle where they take over Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, but in the middle of the triangle, they even call Austin their base of operations, federally funded, UN model city. And, oh, if you're not an insider, you're, you're not allowed to build a condo. You're not uh, oh, we're going to say this tree, uh, you can't cut it down. Even uh, my, my lawyer, Eric Tabb, I, he said he'll come on air about this, I should get him on. Downtown, they let this business build a big outside deck on Congress. Gave them the permits and then came and withdrew the permits after it was built, $150,000 deck. It's a giant deck. And it was a big case in the news. They were doing this to hundreds of people on record, but the, they fought back. My lawyer fought back. Went and beat the city. But, but now they're still harassing the company anyways. This is what they do. They come and they say, yeah, you're allowed to build. And then they come back and say, now you can't build. The essence of the New World Order is this story from PrisonPlanet.com, American Dream, Michael Snyder. 
Look at this. Obama administration requires magician to submit 32-page disaster plan for his rabbit, pay all the fines and fees, and register it under OSHA to be able to bring his rabbit that he's been for decades bringing in to schools and nursing homes and other places. Marty the magician. I'm going to get him on. The U.S. Department of Agriculture requires the rabbit be licensed, which is weird enough, but then things uh, enter the rabbit warrant of the truly bizarre in the USDA rule seven years in the making. That he has to have a disaster plan for the rabbit for flooding, earthquake, wildfire, uh, you know, obviously insurance, international attack, to name a few examples. Uh, and uh, he goes on to say, my country's broke, he says. We are out of money, and now the government is spending time and money worrying about emergency plan for a bunny rabbit. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the plan here. We have such a nanny state. I shot a video of my son catching a 50-pound alligator gar. My phone died by the time I caught a 95-pounder. It was out of batteries. By the way, we were throwing these back, even though we could have taken them and, you know, they supposedly have some pretty good backstrap meat. With sport fishing, plus they're an air breathing, it's a pre prehistoric fish, it breathes mostly from the air uh, over its lungs. And there are people all over saying, shut my channel down for torturing a fish, because they think it's torture when we take the, 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 the prongs to open its mouth to get the hook out. And they're, they're taking over, they're going to ban fishing. Unless you're a factory trawler, then it's okay. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. By the way, I'm going to play the video and audio of this later in the hour of uh, my great crime abusing an alligator gar. And, you know, you sit there and you joke about that. People think it's, it's bad to go hunting, but then they'll go eat a hamburger. And when I drive by factory farms and things, I think that's really abusive. And we should move towards more humane farming. And I try to, with my purchases, buy uh, things that have been naturally caught or... Uh, things that have been properly farmed, raised, because I don't want the GMO. I don't want all the garbage that's in those animals. I don't want the farm-raised chicken that is literally like a concentration camp where they cut their beaks off uh, when they're babies so they don't peck themselves to death. The chickens try to commit suicide in the big mega massive, those big steel buildings, aluminum buildings you see out in the countryside. And I know people are out there trying to make a living doing it, but man, I've been inside those. I have been inside those. I have seen it. I have seen what it's like. And let me tell you, it's it's a, it is it it you can feel the the spiritual or psychic energy of those chickens are are those turkeys. I was actually what I what I really saw was a turkey house with about a I think it had a half million turkeys in it. It was one of the smaller ones. And let me tell you, you could just see mites and stuff crawling across the floor. <laughs> the point is, is that then. You've got these dumbed down idiots who are on my YouTube channel going, I'm reporting you to YouTube for animal abuse. Because with a 50 pound gar, you know, you've got these tongs, uh, these dull hooks that you use to get in there and open its mouth up to then get the hook out. And I can legally and lawfully then, you know, butcher it and uh, do that if I wanted to. And I decided to throw them back. Uh, it was a you know, normal human instinct to go out and fish, show my son. Uh, we caught some other fish that were more edible that we actually ate. Um, but we ran into a bunch of big alligator gar. Again, I caught over a 90-pounder, landed it. Uh, we, 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 we hooked a shark, a black tip, but it broke off. Uh, well, its tail slashed when it came to the boat and um, broke that off. It was about five feet long. Uh, and by the way, I like shark. I would have kept that and eaten that. 
Uh, but the whole point is, is there's something about that prehistoric gar. They say they actually taste pretty good, but I didn't. And so we use it as a joke to say, uh, Obama caught the fish, we didn't catch it. And the guide that took us out there and did a great job, uh, by the way, uh, Mark Malfa down in South Texas, he's been on some of the Discovery Channel River Monster shows. He did a great job taking us down there. Uh, and um, you know, we're just we're just there to abuse fish, according to people that 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 literally think no one should be able to eat any meat. But the issue is they have to clear land and displace and kill animals to be able to grow stuff that vegan eat. And you may be on a high horse and feel good about what you're doing, and and, and are against animal cruelty. And I get that, but you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the whole world animals eat animals. If you're an omnivore or a carnivore, and humans are omnivores. I mean, is it cruel that that gar had parasites on it, sucking its blood? I mean, are they being abusive? Should they have a YouTube strike put on them? Should they get in trouble? It's this ultra-political correctness where no one cares about GMO killing almost all the honeybees. People don't care about all sorts of just incredible attacks on humans being poisoned, humans being killed all over the world, 30 million humans starving to death. People associate all of their humanity with identifying with animals and not humans. And if humans aren't protected and if life isn't valued for humans or aborted babies, it's not going to be valued for animals. And the globalists pick and choose which environmental issues they want to hot button push, just like they do with the Trayvon Martin case to hot button push. They choose politically issues they want to manipulate to get an agenda through. And now John McCain, today, I have the video clip, has joined Obama and has joined Gutierrez in the Congress and everybody else calling to have a federal law restricting and rolling back concealed carry. They're so angry. On average, you have a 27% drop in crime within two years after concealed carry goes in in Florida and Texas. And within a decade, they saw over 40% drops in crime. Since uh, the Justice Department numbers came out from 1996, you know what the crime rate dropped, right? Violent crime, 61%. Crimes with firearms, 49%. We've beaten that dead horse, but we need to beat it some more because people, the establishment knows, ladies and gentlemen. The establishment knows if they arm folks in Southside Chicago and got rid of the gun prohibition, the criminals would disappear very, very quickly. I mean, in a year. You'd have thousands of criminals shot dead, and then it'd all be over. Kennesaw, Georgia had a huge crime wave. They, pa they passed a law repealing the gun ban. Crime rate dropped 86%. Look that up. That's the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. The answer is guns. Guns. You know, rednecks don't hardly ever get robbed driving big trucks with cowboy hats on. You know why nobody robs them? Because everybody knows they got a gun. They got a shotgun, a rifle, a four-wheel drive. And I want everybody to be a country boy, even if you live in the city, whether you're black, white, or Hispanic. I want you to man up and learn how to use a gun so you can defend yourself. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.